Alright, so I know you guys haven't necessarily finished with that yet, but let's go ahead and just open up what we've got here. So this one assignment of mine is uh, I stole it from a textbook and then I've refined it a bit more. I uh, formatted it a bit more so it makes more sense and give it a better title. So it's called Blame Pope Gregory the Thirteenth. So this was um, so if you read my footnote, um, the most widely used civil calendar is and the calendar used in the United States is the Gregorian calendar, which uh, succeeded the Julian calendar. Um, because it turns out the calendars have this problem, which is called leap years, and it had to account for the fact basically that the rotation of the Earth around the sun is not precisely 365 days. And the Gregorian calendar is pretty close to that. Um, so it was instituted by uh, Pope Gregory the 13th, who was, was from 15... Uh, 72 date if it was pope from for about 13 years and uh, they it was used for a while but a lot of countries didn't use it until the 1900s because of course the Protestant Reformation came after that and then of course it was just all the mess because why would we want to follow those what the silly papists say so it was just a it took a while for it to become you know a civil calendar rather than something that was just purely religious so all right so what you're going this assignment is fairly the the task what you're of what you're going to accomplish is fairly straightforward which is that you're going to ask you're going to test whether a given date is a valid date right just ask the user to input a string and it tests if that string is a date uh, specifically it tests if it's month month slash day day slash year 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 and is that a valid date okay like for instance the 13th month you know, month 13, 25 days, 1987 is not a valid date. Uh, you know, um, April 50th, whatever the year is, is not a valid date, right? So if the date is not valid, you want to report why. So let's just go over some more details. So dates, again, they're formatted in the U.S. format, which is month first, then day, then years, which has never really made sense to me why you do it in that order, Okay. Valid months are in the range of 1 to 12, and if you remember from algebra, those brackets mean inclusive, right? So from 1 to 12, right? The rule is, is that September, April, June, and November, which are months, what, 9, 4, 6, and 11, all have 30 days. All the other months but February have 31 days. And February has 28 days except for leap years. And leap years are more complicated than you ever thought. Okay, so so right, a, a, a number a, in a year that's not divisible by four is a normal year. Like uh, this year is what 2018 is not divisible by four, so it's a normal year. A year divisible by four is a leap year, most of the time, right? Most of the time you were told if it was just divisible by four, it's a leap year. It's not not true. So this, most of the time, it's a leap year except if it's divisible by 100, okay? So 1900 is not a leap year, except, there's one more exception, any year that is divisible by four is in fact a leap year. So if it's divisible by 400, it's a leap year. If it's divisible by just 100, it's not a leap year. Uh, so examples here, 1644, that's divisible by four, it is a leap year. 1645 is not divisible by four, so it's not. Uh, 1600 is a leap year because it's divisible by 400. Even though it's divisible by 100, it's divisible by 400, so it is a leap year. 1700, while it is divisible by 4, it's divisible by 100 while not being divisible by 400, so it's not a leap year. So you will have to think of a way to arrange the logic for these statements. Think about the different way to categorize leap years and not leap years. Okay? So uh, this is an if. So surprisingly, it doesn't really this. I like this problem because it does not really care how much programming experience you have because the logic is still tangled and you just got to untangle it and figure out the best way to do it. So I'll give you some hints. But in order to do this, though, we need to be able to separate little bits of a string, right? We got we've got a big string here, right? I'm having you enter a date in this format: month, month, slash day, day, slash year, 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 year. Okay. So in order to be able to do that, we need to be able to take a string apart into small little pieces. Okay which is actually not that hard, easier than it is in Java. So 
what we need to do is we got to learn how to slice a string up. So there's a, a notation called slice notation in Java, which is pretty nice. Um, and this will, and let's, sorry, it's not Java, it's in Python. Uh, what makes this particularly nice in Python is that it's the same notation you we will eventually use for lists as well. So let's go ahead and say uh, word is equal to hello. And I'm just making sure, that, yep, okay. Word is equal to hello. Okay, so print word. Okay, boom. So we've got, uh, well, yep. Did not do what I wanted to do. It was like, something's off here. Print hello. Oh, see, I am just not on top of it right now. There we go. Boom. Hello. Okay. So if I wanted to get a individual, so the way this gets stored is it, is it, is it stores each, in the, this is a group of individual characters. And what happens is that we store each of these individual characters into an index, in a bunch of in indexes. We, it's organized, and you can actually access each individual character. So, right, if we think about this, then H is the first character, E is the second, L is the third, L is the fourth, and then O is the fifth. But, unfortunately, it's, it's uh, because for mathematical reasons, which we'll eventually get into, it's not necessarily that simple how that works out. So, um, imagine there's kind of a container, right? Um, so, H, E, L, L, O. Right, that holds each and and what it does is that it holds it together, and each of these letters is in its own little box. Right now, each of these boxes is we can uh, directly address by an index, by, by what we call an index. And indexes start with zero. So H is at index zero, E is at index one, L is at index two, the second L is at index three, this one's at index four. Okay. So you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I ask for the 4 index 2, I'll get L back. If I ask for index 4, I'll get O back. If I ask for index 5, I'm going to get an out-of-bounds extension. Okay? So um, let's go ahead and see how that works on uh, in regards to this. Um, and again, it just if, if it's longer than 5 characters or shorter than 5 characters, then obviously the ending index changes, but these always start with zero. So um, so let's go ahead and get the uh, first index zero of word, right? That's H. It's the letter H. Index zero of, uh, sorry, index three, right? It was zero is, so we've got, so index three, that would be the second L. And just to make it sh uh, clear, we will do, I'll say word is equal to H-E-L-L-O, right? Just to make it clear. So word uh, index 3 gives me the second L, capital L, there. Okay. Um, hello. And so these, this has an, inst in, there's interesting properties here, like, uh, so you can always get the first character pretty easily. Right, just by saying word zero. To get the last one, it's a bit more interesting because you don't know necessarily the last one is. But we do know how big the word is. Length of word is five. Right, we know that it's five letters long. And if it's five letters long, then the indices have to be zero through four. Right? Notice how it's zero through four? It's five letters long. Right, it ends with four because normally if you were going one, two, three, four, five, it, this, this one, but we start with zero. Yes? So, like, let's say people are putting in debates and stuff, these slashes would also count as numbers? These slashes would also be an index, index yes. In, they, would be, they would be in an index, yeah. So, um, and, and so would these, so if I did, uh, let's say, word is equal to uh, how are you, question mark, right? Um, word, so if I were to do word three, that returns a space, right? Because zero, one, two, three, the three lands in that space. 
So anything's a care. Every 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 keystroke is a character. Um, one of the more complicated things, though, to remember is uh, that gets me into the question of uh, here's kind of a trick question, unfortunately. Uh, how? So he said. Hi. Oops. Word. Actually, yeah. he said, I accidentally hit the enter key. Hi. Right. Word. He said hi. The length of this of this is of word. In this case, is 12 characters. So you've got zero. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But then this escape sequence counts as one character, right? Because it results in one character. So, so that was, let's see, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So an escape key sequence does count as one character. That's not so that's just important to remember there. Um, now, um, in other languages, you have to do some to get the last character of something. You have to do something comp sometimes something complicated, like hey, okay, so if the last word is at, so if the last index is sorry, if this is len, if this word is len long, okay, right? Then if I subtract one from it, that will get me the last index, right? Fortunately, uh, Python says that's silly, right? You can easily go out of bounds, right? Getting, so this is 12 long, so getting index 12 says it's out of range, right? Can't go out of range. But if I do negative one, interesting thing happens. It goes backwards. So negative one gets me the last character. And negative two gets me the second to last character. Now this is unique to Python. It's a wonderful thing to, in, in Python. So let me just go ahead and set, set it up to something easier. A, so if you do negative zero, okay. Right. A, B, well, negative zero is just zero, so gets you the first thing. So word, uh, so word, right, zero gets me the first letter. Word, negative one gets me the last, the last letter in there. So that's pretty useful. All right, so what are slices then that I've been talking about? So a slice is is doing a range. That's exactly it. We're cutting up a little slice. And the notation is as follows. Uh, there's actually three. It's, um, it's start, end, and then by step, but we're going to ignore the step right now because the third part of it is optional. So we'll just go from start to end. Okay? Start through end. And it gives me a small slice of the string. So uh, if I do ABC, so if I want, for instance, just the first three characters, I go 0 to 3. So it starts from, as notice it returned A, B, C. So the way it works is that it's, it goes from the start. And this notation, so I'm going to put some no mathematical notation on the board. It gives me, um, a slice gives me the start. End. How many of you are familiar with this notation that you've seen, like in mathematics, right? Where you go from, so it includes the starting index and goes up to, but does not include the end. Uh, you may wonder why, and the issue is, and the reason it has to do with the way for loops get constructed in a bunch of other languages, and it's just the assumption is for programming languages that when you do a range, you have the beginning and you go up to, but you don't include the last thing. Um, so here, we're going up to, but not including index 3. So we go through index 0, 1, and 2. But also as a result of doing this, well, 0 to 3 gives me the first three characters. Um, what if I forget this over here? 0 to 3. Well, in that case, this, the first, the 0 is, in, if I leave something out, it's implied. Okay. So word, same over here, if I go from a uh, word, if I want to start from two, and I leave out the second uh, argument, 
the it just simply goes to the end. So starting from index 2 all the way to the end. So let's look at the examples I have on the sheet. Uh, I have So if I have something called my name, oh, sorry, should be capital M over there, but string 0 through 2, this would hold these values. It would hold my. If I did 3 through 6, it would hold nam. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to but not including 6, right? So that's how a slice works. It goes up to but doesn't include the index. And if you need, and if and if you're like doing this on the exam, uh, no, I, I highly recommend like going and just putting. I just highly recommend if you've got a word, right, word, and you want to make sure you're getting the indices, indices right, just you know, write down the numbers on top, uh, you know, so that you've got an issue, you've got them. <laughs> yes. So say you had a seven character string. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead. To get the final one, that would have to be the what? Seventh character. Yeah, right? seventh character, which would be index six. Uh -huh. So, so if we got a word that was seven long, so let's go with just a b c d e f g, right? Mm -hmm. Word six gets me the last character in it, and going from and giving me and asking for the slice from six to the end, that just gives me the last character because there's nothing after that, right? Make sense? It gives you six up to and including up to the end. Okay. Everything after it starts from zero, right? So right. It should be zero. Right. So word zero. Okay. okay. Word from zero through 6 will give me everything but but G. All right, so that, instead of 6, you'd have to put 7. Right. Word 0 through 7. Or, alternatively, I can just say, uh, actually go up until the end. Like that. So yeah, there is, um, so that's the way that works. Um, so those are the slices for that. So um, of course, and of course, once you create a slice, so of course, we're slicing like these little sections of strings out. So anything you slice out will be a string which means since we're looking at numbers, you will want to make sure that these are numbers, right? So you'll want to, if you take a, you'll want to make sure you convert it into a string, okay? Um, so some other thing, so the other, my organizational hint to you is you want to make sure that you, that the month is the first thing you want to check, okay? So because the month determines how many days everything has. The, and the other thing is that you only really have to check if it's a leap year if you're actually in February. The other months don't care what the year is, right? Only February cares what the year is. So work on all the other months but February first, and then once you do that, that should help. So you don't need to use any methods for this one or functions, but uh, here's the way I divided up the points for this one. So it's 30 points whether or not to basically this, the program correctly determines that the input is a date. In other words, it splits it up into months, days, and years correctly. Uh, 30, another 30 points if it can handle non-leap year days. So anything handling everything about leap years is worth 30 points. Uh, handling leap years correctly is 30 points. And then the source code being reasonably formatted, that's just a leftover from Java. If, if your code runs, then it's reasonably formatted. That's the nice thing about Python. So, um, so there is a postscript there about time and basically how hard time is, and I've got a link to a YouTube video about how difficult it is to work with time. So we've covered, we're, we're covering, you know, it's actually quite a nice pace we've, we're setting here, and I'm very happy with it. So we've covered Boolean statements, we covered a bit of IO, strings and slices, we went into if else's. So we'll be able to get into loops and stuff uh, next week. I'm will let you so by hopefully by Saturday. So does it sound reasonable that if I provide some videos for you guys to watch before coming to class on 
So does it sound reasonable if by the end of Saturday, would you guys be able to watch maybe up, let's say, let's see, 45 minutes worth of video before class? By, if, I, if I give you something by the end of Saturday, so you would have Sunday and Monday, does it sound reasonable that you'd be able to watch it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just literally spend time on YouTube. I would upload it on YouTube. I'd let you know. <laughs> but the um, I will upload the video. So I'll upload the uh, videos. I'll try to get some videos on loops done for you guys on um, on there, and then I can go over functions in class. That way, I can give you guys some more time to work on like this big problem on Tuesday. Right, so you don't have to tackle this over the weekend, but you can try. Uh, what I might suggest is me is like choose a partner, meet up outside of class, and work on it together. And I'll teach you guys also on Tuesday how to properly do that. Um, but yeah, so we'll you guys can continue working here. We've got about 20 more minutes, and I'll come around and check off what you currently have.